Hello you all, and welcome to another video of the Python Fundamentals series. At the end of the last video, I said that we're going to be moving on to the next chapter of the course, and well, I changed my mind and decided that we should wait and do another project on control flow. Control flow is super important, and it's absolutely crucial to completely master it before moving on. So today, we're going to be building a mini game, and you'll see what that is in just a few moments. Personally, I think it's a super cool application of everything we've learned up to this point. So without further ado, let's get started. The program that we will be writing today is going to be a number guessing game in Python. And here are the goals with this program. Firstly, we want to give the user ability to input guesses. And based on the guess that they input, the program is going to give hints to the user whether their guess is too low, too high, or if it's correct. And lastly, we want to limit the number of tries that the user can attempt before the game ends. In this program, the key concepts are input and output, control flow, including conditionals and loops. And lastly, we'll actually be using something new called the random module. We haven't talked about modules yet since it will be covered in a later chapter of this course. For this project though, we're going to be using the randint function of the random module to make our program more interesting and more fun. And we haven't talked about what a function is, that's the next chapter of this course, and we haven't talked about modules yet, so don't, under don't worry if you don't understand how they work since it will be explained in depth later. For now though, if we look at this cell, we'll see at the top of the cell we need to write this line of code, import random, and that will give us access to the members of the random module, including the rent end function. And in this demonstration of how the function works, we can see we have a for loop, and in each of the 25 iterations, the program is going to print out a random number between one and three, including one and three. So if I run the cell, you can see one, two, and three printed out 25 times in a random fashion. And if I run it again, you can see different numbers printed out randomly. And if I run it again and again, and that is basically how the randint function works. So I think this will make our program much better because the computer is going to be able to generate random numbers instead of us having to give the computer random, uh, you know, hard coded numbers to work with. So now let's get started coding this program. All right, let's get started writing this number guessing program. Right now I'm in Sublime Text, which is my favorite code editor, and you can choose whatever programming editor you want. And I've made a file called numberguessing.py. This is where I will be writing the code for this program. The first thing I'm going to do, if you remember, is we need to import the random module to use the random function. So we're gonna say import random. And don't worry if you don't understand what this is, since we haven't talked about how modules work. That will be a later chapter in the course. For now, though, just know that this call, this statement, is going to give us access to the random function. And using the random function, we're going to make a variable called random num, and it's going to be equal to random dot rand int zero ten. So what this does is it assigns the value of random.randint010 to random num. And so now random num is going to hold the value of a random integer between zero and 10, including both endpoints. And after that, we want to make a while loop. So while guess is not equal to random num, we want to continue the loop. So while the user's guess is not equal to random num, we want to continue the game. And actually before that, we need to make a variable called guess. Let's give it a value of negative one, since negative one isn't going to be equal to anything between zero and 10. So while guess is not equal to random num, we're going to ask the user for a guess. So guess is going to be equal to, uh, in inputs, let's pass in the prompt of guess a number between zero and 10. And after that, we're going to compare guess with the correct random num value. So if guess 
is equal to random num, we want to print out a string telling the user that, that they've gotten the guess correct. So congratulations. Uh, we can just say guess is correct. And actually, because guess is going to be a, let's see, so guess is equal to, so remember how the input function is going to return string values. So in order to compare it to a an integer value, we have to convert guess to an integer. So now this is an integer, and this is also an integer, so we can compare them. But during string concatenation, we have to convert it, convert it back to a string using the str function. All right, so if guess is correct, then we will print out this statement. If it's not correct, though, we want to do elif guess is less than random num. We want to print out too low. Hopefully, this is pretty easy to understand. So if guess is, is less than random num, we would print out too low. Otherwise, we're going to print out too high. So there are only three possible scenarios of guess either equaling random num, less than random num, or greater than random num, in which case we'll print out too high. And if I run this program, let's see if there is anything wrong with it right now. Guess a number between 0 and 10. Let's guess 5 is too high. Let's try 3. It's still too high. 1 is correct. So it will tell me congratulations. 1 is correct. And if I run this program again, you can see it might be a different, oh wow, I just got it on the first try, so this time 5 is the random, random number. And now let's try to make the program so that it can continue running after each round, I guess. So we can make another while loop outside of this while loop, so we can say while true, this time we can make an infinite loop, we'll break out of it. So for now, let's just indent this, four spaces. So while true, we want to generate a random number. Actually, let's give the user the ability to choose an upper bound for the random number. So we're going to give a variable. We're going to make a variable called upper, which is going to be equal to, we're going to ask the user, choose an upper bound for the random number. And so random num is not actually going to be random int where actually it's going to be zero and then upper but since this is going to be a string we have to convert that into an int like this so right now this is an infinite loop so we have to address that problem before the running running the program so it won't crash so what about we make it so that if the user type q we exit the program standing for quit so we will test if upper is equal to q, we would break. So if the user in inputs q as the upper bound, which it's not the upper bound, but just the input, if q is inputted, then we would break outside of this loop. So the program will just come down here, oops, come down to line 19 and end. Let's test this out. So number guessing game, choose an upper bound for the random number. So if I choose 10, it will tell me guess a number between 0 and 10. And if I try 5, too high, 3, too low, 4 is correct. Actually, we have to change it so that this would be 0 and let's make it, oops, um, 0 and random, or no, it will be upper. And let me sort out the quotation marks and such. All right. So that was... Now make it so that zero and upper, the upper is going to be the upper bound that the user inputs. And now let's take a look at how we can make it so that the user won't have forever to try and guess the number. So why don't we make it so that there is a limited amount, limited number of tries before the game ends. So we can make a variable called guesses is equal to, let's make it upper divided by three. So since upper is going to be the value inputted by the user, it can be a thousand, it can be a million. We can't set a, you know, one value for it. Let's just do upper divided by three. 
And during each iteration of the, during each guess, after each guess, we're going to decrement guesses by one. So if guess, if guesses is say five at the start of this loop, then after the first iteration is going to be four. So we can actually make another condition. So if guess is correct, then we just, you know, let the program exit and do whatever it's supposed to do. But otherwise we add another condition here. If L of guesses is equal to zero. So if the user has run out of guesses, we would print out a message telling them that. So oops, you ran out of guesses. The correct number was, let me make words wrap so good. Uh, we can use the str function, remember? So random num, and then concatenate it to a uh, new line character at the end. So let me try this program now. So number guessing py, choose an upper bound for the random number. Let's choose 50 this time. So now you can see 50 is printed out instead of 10. So we know that it is registered and the program knows that we want to guess a number between zero and 50. So I'll guess a number, I'll guess 25 is too low. Let's try 38, it's still too low. Let's try 45, too high. So 43, correct. Congratulations, we've gotten the correct answer. And I can continue playing. So 10, you can see now it's zero and 10, and I can choose five, and five is apparently the number that the program assigned. I can press Q, and press enter and you can see the program ended. So that is pretty much the end of writing this code. To recap what we did is firstly, we have one line of code importing the random module so it can be used in our program. After that, we have a while loop that will run as long as the user does not want to leave the program by pressing Q. And we would ask the user for an upper bound and if the upper bound or the input they input is Q, we would break out of this while loop. And on the other hand, if the user actually inputs a, a string that's not Q, then we would assign a value of random.randint 0 upper to random num. And after that, we want to give the program a limited, uh, the, give the user a limited amount of guesses. So that's going to be upper divided by three. And here we assign guess to negative one. So while guess is not equal to random num, we would allow the user to guess a number and decrement the number of guesses they have left. And if guess is equal to random num, would print out congratulations, you got it correct. L if guesses is zero. So if the user ran out of guesses, we would tell them that. And if the guess is too low, we would tell them that. And if it's too high, we would also tell them that. And now actually I'm reminded that I actually didn't test whether this guess is equal to zero thing works. So let me try that now. Oops, we're guessing. So if I try, let's do five and I'm gonna keep guessing one, 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 one. I see. So. Let's see what the problem is. Okay, so while guess is not equal to random num, we just forgot another condition, which is needs to be, and guesses is greater than zero. So if guesses is less than or equal to zero, then the while loop will end. So let me try this again. If I choose two, and it would be zero too low. Oops, okay, so let me see what the problem is this time. So it turns out that the problem we had was guesses is int divided by three. So that's going to return a possible floating point number. So it might not be a whole number like one, two, or three. And now up down here, we have guesses is equal to zero. So this may be, you know, 0 0.3333. And this would not be true. So this won't be printed out. And yeah, so that is the problem. If I fix this, we can just put a integer division or also known as a floor division operator here. So this is always going to be an integer. And we can just to make sure we can put this as a letter, lesser than or equal to instead of just equal to. 
And now if I run this program, we can see if I choose 10 and if I keep trying one, 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 you can see, oops, you ran out of guesses. The correct number was zero. So now I'm going to keep trying or I can just press Q to exit. And yeah, so that is the bug that I had just now. Hopefully this, shown, this has shown you how you can use control flow to make, you know, really interesting games like this one where you can interact with the computer and the computer can randomly generate numbers using the random module, which we'll talk about later again in this course. And now we're really at the end of chapter two of the Python fundamental series. Please consider subscribing. And again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video to start our exploration on functions.